and that what she think she was doing, uh, staying away from the religion. How could that happen to me? So sometimes don't judge anybody. So you never know your situation. You might be having easy life. You might have somebody came to you to teach you about your religion and maybe remind you of wrong and right. Some of them have this opportunity. But the thing just because you practice the religion or you study or you learn, you're superior or you're better, you are 100% mistaken and wrong. And today's subject is part of that. I think Quran by the heart or my heart. This has too many meaning to me. It could be literally, meaning you memorize the Quran by heart. And that by itself is a very noble act. It takes a lot of intellectual ability, it takes a lot of commitment, shall I talk about that later on. But that doesn't make you better Muslim. That doesn't make you better human to begin with. Because nowadays, you can go to the internet, click your letter, and the whole knowledge of the Quran will be under your command. You can go to a program, you pick up hundred different recitals in any style you want. You can buy a CD for three, four dollars, and they do much better job than all of us. So, the better issue is that just to memorize the Quran by heart, which is very important, very significant. Have of blessing is to memorize the Quran by action. Inshallah. So those be the main, inshallah, to focus. Now, memorizing the Quran, by the way, has a lot of benefit, spiritual and physical. There is a study, I think, done by Columbia University, which I go there, I give thought about to them once a month at least, and deal with the students from there. It shows that when you study another language and you use it, most likely you go to lower your chance to get Alzheimer's disease when you get older. Because new language will develop more connection between the brain cells. And that will keep the memory, keep the brain more active, even in advanced ages. Now you might wonder how come our parents, grandparents, they reach 80s, in my case, and 90s, still they know the name of every grandchildren. So this is a hundred person. If they know everybody, husband and wife and family member, what they do. My grandfather was over 100 years. He used to tell my father, how is summer doing? I was in New York with summer. I was in America. He, he remembered that. And he was almost over 100 years old. And he has like at least 100 grandchildren. And he knows each one by name. Why? Because all his life, he kept what? Reading, reciting, and memorizing. He never smoked, he never drank alcohol, he used to walk, he ate healthy food. So they help each other, the physical aspect and spiritual aspect. They go together. If you focus on one of them, you lose the other benefit. So to make it short now, when they ask, I collect for you like some very noble saying by our early companions about Quran by heart. One time they asked Imam Malik. Imam Malik, before Imam Malik, let's start with the companion. We know Ibn Mas'ud, who was one of the greatest scholars in history of Islam. He was the prophet companion, and he was one of the seven great Fuqaha, jurisprudent, one who were expert in the Islamic law and understanding the Holy Quran. They asked him, what's your secret to keep the Qur'an by heart or in the heart? He said, al ala qadr You can keep as much of your Qur'an memorized or kept in the heart based on your intention. I mean, the bigger your intention, the bigger your commitment, the bigger you want to do it, it will happen to you. If you put that on the first list of your priority in life, you will have it achieved. If you put that to be the last, after I go to have my list, my dinner, my lunch, my party, after buying this list, now this shoes on sale, this jacket, you know, a good price, you see, and you spend all your life shopping, uh, looking at your Facebook, looking 
got your email account, we got your eyeball. This is nice song, this is nice. You find what? If you have something at the end, you do something for the Quran. That's why it depends on how much intention you have to memorize. Okay, by your heart will happen to you. And this example from the person who committed himself to the Quran, knowledge, is a companion. They ask also, after that, Imam Malik, one of the greatest scholars in history, and one of the founder of one school of thought. <coughs> and then now, everybody in North Africa, and Indonesia, and Egypt, and Syria, follow his teaching. He was so noble, when they asked him, what your secret for Hefos? He said, the crowd, just repetition. So, if you want to memorize, first you have to commit yourself, really, to study with somebody who professional Quran scholar, Quran hafiz. That's very important. After you learn, and luckily, at Peru, we started this class, by the way. We have Tajweed class, recognized by the school. Every Friday evening, we meet for about four hours. Two hours for sister to practice, lecture in between, after that, the brother of practice. Because I told them, unless you study the basic, you cannot really go ahead with that aspect of life, you see. So, but if you learn how to read correctly, and you read on somebody who knows how to teach you how to read, after that, if you repeat every verse or every line ten times, Eventually, you will keep it in your memory all your life. Because repetition is very important on what? Memorization. They ask also Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, another great scholar, about keeping the Quran by heart. He said, Rabbi Allah Anhu, al Ibtan. What that means? Perfection. If you don't do Swami's job, don't do it when you are tired, or don't do it when you are eating or drinking or watching TV or you are on the internet or you are just in a gathering that doesn't help you focus. So if you perfect around you the situation, make it clean, spiritual, pure, good environment, good gathering, you help yourself to commit the Quran to be by heart, inshallah. Again, I'm giving you actual example of people who did that, not matter of just theory. They ask after that Al Hassan, radiallahu anhu, Hassan al Basri. He was a Tabirin, Sayyid Tabirin, was a scholar of his own time, known for his moral character and standard. What's the best way we can keep the Quran by heart? He said, radiallahu anhu, that Ishtani bil Ma'asi, because he was asked, how come, there's another ashti, how come we write the Quran? But the Quran always escaped from us. We memorize, but we forget easily. He said, اشتري بالمعاصي تحتوي or تحوي علم رسول الله. If you avoid sinful action, sinful behavior, most likely your heart going to return, going to return the knowledge of Rasulullah and the knowledge of the Quran itself. They ask also Ibn al-Qayyim, which is very important for our time. Great scholar. He said in his Nuniya, the very famous poetry, when he said that, حب الألحان وحب القرآن في قلب عبد لا يجتمعان. The love of music, الحان. And all of us attached to that. We hear it. And the Quran mentioned that. إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد. Surely hearing. Vision and your heart, all of that will be asked about in what we hear, what we listen, what you see, what you look at, what you think of, what you act upon. All of that for a mature person, a mature Islamic standard, any person who reach puberty age with a sound mind. You have to be genius. Just if you can know the basic of life, you are what? Mature physically and mentally and spiritually, so that we will become morally responsible for our own action and belief. So, Hubbul Alham, to be attached, to be too much into loving the music, what about haram or halal, another issue. 
a class of somebody do that. The attachment to music and sound and song, all of that, at the same time, loving Quran memorization, in the heart of the Abid, a believer, they never can be together. They're always against each other. So one way to commit the Quran to your heart, be aware of what you listen to. Really, be aware of your attachment. And after that, the scholar of Islam used to say, المخزونو أولى بالحفظ من المدفون. Sometimes, what that means, المخزون, means what's returned to you is more important to preserve that the new one. Meaning, sometimes from young people with that experience, they think, I want to memorize the whole Quran. I want to do just the Amma. I want to do sort of Baqarah, big chapter. Instead of following about what. The quality become concerned about what? The quantity. So the memorization become what? Very, very like uh, unsustainable. Full of mistake. Full of articulation mistake. It all could have to be confusing to them. All of that one because from the beginning the process of memorization should be based on quality, not quantity. I mean if you know Surah Qul Hu Allahu Ahad correctly better than to know also the Baqara with mistake in, in every, almost every line, every letter sometimes. So make your intention, Al-Ibqan mean what? Perfection. Look for the quality, because that was more important than, because even the quality will make you what you memorize right now, inshallah, will return with you all your life. If you were concerned about the quantity, you know, there are short-term memories and long-term memory. You call a student, I think you study you know, all this aspect in psychology, biology, the human body. So you might return for the short-term memories. But after a while, you don't forget all of that. Why? Because the process of memorization is wrong. So those also, why is that? Because the Quran is very sacred. A heart has to be pure. A heart in Islam for the believer should be really attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's really have that to be your focus. Let's you really have that to be your goal in life. Unless you have that to be your achievement that you want when you die. You go to the grave, you go to the last day, you feel that you did something for your life after. Because to go to college is very important. To achieve a degree is very important. To have a good job is very important. To find a good husband or good wife is very important. But all of that has limitation for what? Only for material life, only for dunya. And sometimes people lose that. The economy is very bad. People will lose their job overnight. People rely sometimes on their beauty. They lose that. Rely on their wealth. They lose that. Rely on family member. But when you rely on nourishing and developing your heart, you might be in bed, Allah forbid, in a hospital. But your heart will be one very full and rich with your situation. That's why one of the hadiths say, Al-Ghina, Ghina Al-Qalb. Wealth or richness, Al-Ghina, Allah Al-Ghani, Allah wealthy. What that means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for the creation. Nowadays the word Ghani could be mean what? Wealthy financially. But simply Ghani means one who has no need. When Allah has been for them, Al-Ghani means Allah has no need for his creation. Creation. So, al ghani means by the Prophet definition, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, al ghina wealth and richness is what the wealth and the richness of of the heart. You can be happy and rich in your heart, even you eat, you are eating like slice of pizza, for example. Nothing wrong with pizza, but we eat it too much. We know that. Okay? But you might be also unhappy. 
even you are in a fancy restaurant, even maybe an eight-star hotel, because happiness and wealth and richness start in the heart, start in the mind, start to know who you are, start to know your purpose of life. Not only sometimes I see young people all they care about is accumulation of material aspect, yet they're not happy. I know a young girl, she's graduated as a lawyer. She makes every year, and she's a single person. She makes over 100,000 a year, working for a nice firm in Manhattan. When we talk to her, you find she's the most unhappy person. She's the most miserable person. And she has a financial debt, almost 200,000. I said, how could that happen? You're a single person, you have no commitment, you don't have like 10 children, you don't have like uh, anything. And you make with salary, because she thinks material thing around her will make her happy to buy the best shoes and the best jewelry and to go to the best restaurant. And she do, she's doing all of that, yet she's unhappy. Why? Because she's missing to understand that. When you are rich in your heart, when you keep the God, Allah word in your heart, you can be happy and content, even you have in your pocket. And I know that some students come to me at Peru, they even have like a change in their pocket to buy like a sandwich on campus or even to get something to drink, even to have like the metro car. I know that. Yet because they have a beautiful attitude about life, you always find them happy and joyful and relaxing. Not even anybody around them they know, for example, they are going through financial difficulty. Why? Because they are in their spirit, in their heart are very rich. And all of that happens when you keep the Quran in your heart. So the Quran always can escape from you, easily. To maintain that, you have to practice it. You have to make a commitment. Every day, ask yourself, when did you finish recitation for the whole book in your life? So my advice to you is, Make a commitment. Every day you spend about five minutes, even three minutes. Read one ayah. Read one ayah. Reflect on the meaning of the ayah. Now, Al Awza'i, another great scholar. Anybody know Al Awza'i? Not very famous name, but he's a great scholar. He was in the level of the great Fuqaha. He was in the level of Imam Shafi'i, Malik. And Ahmad bin Hamza Abu Hanifa Lano. He was in Sham area, what now is Lebanon. He was Faqi Mushtahid. But he didn't have the chance to have a student after him to continue his legacy as what happened to the fourth great Imam. That one always one to follow, for example, one need always to consider the fourth great Imam. Not only because they have the taqwa in their heart, they have awareness of Allah, they have the sound knowledge, but also very important, their knowledge was transmitted to us until today with unbroken transmission of knowledge from themselves to their student to our way. That why we rely on them. Something called snap or authenticity of the knowledge. Now they go to the internet. Who put the information? You have no idea. How sound it is? You have no idea. How authentic it is? You have no idea. Now we have was now commotion and confusion among the people in colleges. You ask one question here, you hear what? What is the front answer? Everybody has the front sources. Everybody has the internet access. Google. Google. Check Google. Or the last scholar Google. Really. No one, people anymore, they won't put the effort we need to study with the scholar. Because scholar teach you manners, behavior, wisdom, not only knowledge, not only information. So it's not their information and their knowledge, you see. When you are on your own, your mistake more than your correct. You know that. Nobody can claim he has a degree in a criminal law unless you say, I went to Jean Jay College, I spent four years and a professor who check on me and they approve me. No engineer can say, 
I read a few books of engineering and become the most qualified engineer. Who would trust a person like that to build for say, a house? Not even a house, a cottage, man. Like small thing, you know. You're not the one to collapse over your head. Who trust a mechanic who to fix the brake of your car? Just by reading a book on this phone. You don't even trust mechanic on your car. You don't trust them to fix your computer. Imagine a medical person who say, I read every book in the lab about medicine. Will you trust him to have for you an operation in your heart or your kidney? If you do, I think I feel sorry for you. Because the guy maybe not to leave his office a lot. Self-seeking in knowledge. Information is available. But to return the knowledge, to know right and wrong, to know the wisdom behind it, to have vision about God, to have compassion, to have what God is now, akhlaq, manas, and adab. You learn that from living people. As much as you go to college, to get a degree in the career he wants to get. So when you graduate, everybody recognizes that from you. You cannot be self-acclaimed scholar in any field now in life. So, Lauzai was a great scholar. He said, one of the best ways that their lifestyle was, ma bayna al-fajri wa al-dhuhri wa al-dhakaratu al-ilam. They used to spend the early generation, the time between fajr, what time is fajr now? Fajr means dawn time. And dhuhr time, noon time. That time for them was spent to review the knowledge they are studying in the evening and afternoon with their shiyu, with their scholars. That's why you find the early scholars in Sibdovidia. You talk about any one of them, they have the knowledge of Quran, knowledge of tafsir, interpretation of the Quran, knowledge of traditional hadith science, knowledge of the Arabic language. Nowadays, I've been around one university, I didn't see any person who really I trust their Arabic background. No matter how much they claim. Well, I give them a small example of ayah to analyze it for you grammatically, they have no idea. They didn't know nominal sentence from uh, verbal sentence. They didn't know really like an adverb from an adjective. Yet, they want to interpret the Quran for you. Like, for me, I say, I'm coming to now translate for you some Chinese verb or statement. I have no idea. So that's what they, they used to do. So I mean, to get the Quran by heart, you have to have daily commitment. Really. And the best time after fashion. You wake up after dawn time when you wake up in the morning, before you check on your stock market, or look at the news, or see who sent you an email, what the latest picture on the Facebook, so, oh, look at me, I bought, I went to the market, I get that, I went that. Before all of that, really, start your day being thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you be alive again in that particular day. How many times we know me about the good sleep? And that is the last day of the life. Really, let's be thankful. You say, Alhamdulillah, bless to Allah, Allazi ahyana who brought me back to life بَعْدَ مَا أَمَاتَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ مِشُورٌ After that, you know, the rest, you should know at least to get up, you make ablution, you pray for rak'ah, sunnah, fajr, go to the masjid even is better, you come back home, you sit with a clear, fresh mind, put everything aside, read Qur'an, memorize, at least for 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour, you get used to it. If you don't do that, you will never, never, never progress in your spiritual path in this life. You will never. Because the best time of the day was early dawn, where the birds start to be like twittering, all of that, really, that's the time. The creation become alive. And the Quran came to many more about this particular time. Even the Hadith say, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah give a blessing to my Ummah, to my nation in the early times and this has two meaning in the early time of every individual of every day or the early time of the Ummah of Islam means the companion time and both are correct understanding 
Because we know the Rasulullah said to Allah that the best generation is what? His own generation. After that, their follower and their follower. Why they were blessed? Why they were the best generation? Because of their moral standard. Not because financial achievement. Not because advancement in technology. Because their moral standard. Equality in society. Taking care for the orphan. Taking care for the widow. Taking care of them to prevent starvation in society. Taking care for nobody can be oppressed. Now a day, alhamdulillah, you're aware of that. They call it the Arabic Spring now. At least the, the countries of the Arab people, they start to awaken after long, long sleep and slumber in their life. Some of them for the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, they were stripped out of their dignity and their pride. And ironically, when Islam came, one of the first declaration by Islam, it was, you know the story of Sayyidina Omar when he told the leader of Egypt at the time, because he treated a Coptic person unjustly. Anybody know the story? The son of the Arab al-As, who was Egyptian governor at the time, prays with the poor, simple Coptic person at the time. Imagine Islam at the time reached out to Egypt, to Africa, and here the leader of Egypt, one of the old civilization. His son raised by running with a simple Coptic person, Christian. Who won the race? The Coptic person. And the son of the leader was very angry. He said, you run faster than me, and I am the son of the leader of, the, of Egypt, and he is like him. And that object, he said, Wallahi, I'm not going to get away with that. He traveled all the way from Egypt to Medina now. Medina, you know where Medina, in Saudi Arabia. In the old day. And he went to complain to the leader of the Muslim. His name was Harun Fattah. He said, now what happened? <coughs> we had a race, I won the race, and he hit me after that, claiming that he's the son of the elite, and I am the son of the inferior in society, second class. And Omar, who was the person who has a kingdom at the time, stretched from all the way North Africa, Morocco now, all the way to the border of China. Imagine how was the state of the time, and who was the leader. He said, I will take care for that. He called upon the leader of Egypt. He said, you and your son come to me right now. They came, most of them. And he brought that poor Egypt Coptic person, telling him what happened. He said, now what happened? What the Omar said? He said, get, get the step. He gave it to the Coptic person. He said, hit him and he hit you. And he said, now, I'm hitting the son of the elite of society. That was justice, equality. After that, he made a statement, and he now recognized by even human rights. He said to everybody at the time, Since when you have the right to enslave people and treat them to be second class, when their mother gave the birth to be equally human to all of you. That statement was the basic foundation of, I think, a human rights organization now. Everybody is born to be what? Equal. Is that when really the Quran is going to be a nation of righteousness? Nowadays, the leader, what they do in those countries, the opposite. You find a family stealing the healthy resources for 50 or 100 years, enslaving people, put them in jail, killing them. In Syria, we have the news recently, a young girl, her brother was protesting against the oppression of the government and injustice. They went to the house, they grabbed a nice beautiful girl, 19 years old girl. It's a very sad story. Just 
to see how much blessing we have here in this bed. Yet, we don't take advantage of that blessing. That air was red repeatedly, was beaten up. Her limbs was cut off. Her head was decapitated. Her skin was, the skin, her skin. After that, they called them, and they killed her brother. After that, they asked the mother, come and receive your son. And by mistake, or by chance, or by Allah's blessing, the mother looked at her son, she found her daughter. Recognized her because sudden body mark. The mother knew her daughter, no matter what. Even after being emulated. The same people in Damascus. Well, Damascus at the time used to have stayed from Andalusia all the way to beyond China. Andalusia now, I mean Indonesia. From Andalusia, Muslim Spain, to what? Indonesia. And even to Philippines. They were so righteous at the time, they collect the charity money to give it to the poor in, in society. Nobody has a need for it. Nobody claims the money. Nobody say, I need a need, financial need. It was righteousness of the heart from the leader and from the follower. The leader doing their job right, the follower were what? The greedy for the money. So they took all this wealth and they give it well. North Africa. All of that because they kept the Quran by heart, not only by literal meaning, but by action. And to prove that, Ibn Abbas, the great scholar, who Rasulullah make a prayer for him, O oh Allah, give him the understanding of the religion, give him the interpretation of the Holy Quran. He used to say, كنا, our style, our habit was نحفظ في اليوم خمسة آيات We used only to memorize five verses every day Not every day He said مرات In only five times Meaning they used to take five verses at the times When they memorize it correctly When they understand the meaning of it And they act upon it after what they do they move to the next five verses. That's why they were the generations that produced later on, 25 years, Arabia was transformed from a bunch of Bedouin people, burying their daughter alive, fighting over a camel for four years or 100 years, to be the one who brought knowledge to, to, to Europe. You know from history, the backbone was for European knowledge came from the Muslim world. Look at Andalusia at the time, between Abbasiro, Ibn Rishid, and the other Jewish and Christian scholars at the time. They were working. Their philosophy is now being taught in universities. Why? Because that was do. He said, Lana is our zahun. We'll never go beyond those five verses until we make practice of those verses. And I conclude by that, I said, so Mayati Qawman, after us, a group of people will come. Yahfazun al Quran. They memorize the whole Quran by heart, but physically, literally. They worry about how you chant it, how you make it beautiful, only from their throat. They never act upon the Quran. Yuqimuna hawufahu. They focus on the sound of it, on the articulation, on tajweed, on the citation rule. Wala yuqimuna, but they don't establish hududahu, they don't establish its ruling. So inshallah, my message to you is, we need to combine both of them. to get the blessing of the book. And to understand that example, imagine Allah forbid, you get sick, you get ill, seriously. And you try to seek the best doctor available. And you find this person. And that expert doctor will give you a prescription about the cure of your problem or disease or illness. You take that medication and you start with what? 
reflecting on how you read it correctly, working on the sound, working on the letter, looking at the paper, how beautiful, do it in calligraphy. I spend all your time reflecting on one, on the prescription, how it's done, how beautiful, all of that. But in reality, we never put effort to take the medication as opposed to be taken. I think even you go to the best doctor, writing prescription is not going to be helpful to you unless you put effort to do well to use it. Because the benefit of the medication will be useful to you when it's being used as described by experts, physicians. Not only worry about the way it's written and the way it's supposed to be read, and you make it in a nice frame, put it on your room, in your car, on the shelf of the TV, as a beautiful piece of art, for example. Because reception wasn't meant to be piece of art, meant to be used. Same thing for us. The Holy Quran is a book of instruction, a book that guides you in your life, a book that makes you spiritual, a book that <coughs> makes you more moral. I'm focusing on that a lot because I see a lot of young people now, they think to be good Muslim, you focus on the appearance only. Sometimes. Some, I mean by that, sometimes we think to be good Muslim, just focus on wearing hijab or wearing certain clothes, or not to wear certain clothes, or to grow certain beard, or not to grow certain beard. You make your band short or high. You make all of that in reality, it doesn't benefit society. Nothing wrong or right. Because you practice your deed, you do. You get the blessing of that. What society wants to, to, to get from you is what? Your moral standard. When you are a student, to be a good student. You be honest, you be sincere, you be hardworking, you be nice and respectful to your fellow student, whether they are Muslim or not, whether they agree with you or not, whether you have anything to do with them or not. Because religion is supposed to make you a better person. If you don't get that fruit or reason, you must understand what religion is all about. So I encourage all of you, inshallah, here at MSA, be all of you people of love, people really of understanding, people of respect. Really, follow the sport regulation. Or really, like in a way that you bring the best food for your own life. And to do that, ethical standard is what's important. So inshallah, to keep the Quran by heart, there are two ways. Way to commit it to your heart by by knowledge, by memorization, by learning recitation, by doing that as a commitment of every day. But all of that is the method. What's the goal? The goal to elevate yourself over what? Over corruption, over oppression, over wrongdoing to other people. Because to me, that's the fruit of the religion. And you know the pen was saying, you know them by the fruit of their own actions, not by what they say, but what they claim to know. Because a lot of people, after all, they're saying, people don't care how you know, and at least they know how much you care about them. It's more important to care about people, let them know that, rather than get people to care about how much you know. You get that? People, care, people don't care about how much you know, and let's let them know how much you care about them. So inshallah, take care for yourself, take care for your family, take care for your school here, take care for the sister and the brother who help you with the student life, take care after all honestly for New York City, take care for the country here, and take care for the whole earth. Because your moral standard makes you feel responsible for everything around you. Take of commitment. The first commitment is to find the right person and motivate. That by itself is a big challenge. <laughs> Honestly, it's a big challenge to everybody. And after that, to put up with the wife or with the husband or with the parents, with the children, with the young girl when she was 10 years old, she started 
argue and fight with her mother. You don't know nothing, ma'am. You see, I know everything. The boy is everything. When little whiskers start to grow on his mustache, he think he becomes the lion of the house. He becomes, uh, what do you call that, like, you know, the king of the jungle. They act like that, you see. They, all they know, it's nothing. You know? So, when you manage to make those young people righteous, that to get the blessing when you are in the grave. So make that your goal, inshallah, from putting the Quran in your heart or by heart. Leave behind useful knowledge, ongoing charities, and righteous children after you. That should be the goal of your life when you study, when you read, when you work hard, when you have a degree from college. That should be the goal no matter what. Insha'Allah, I think if you do that, if you commit yourself to that, insha'Allah, you're keeping the Qur'an by heart, not only by memorization literally, but also by producing, insha'Allah, righteous generation. Especially now as a Muslim. I don't want to hide that from you. The last point for sure this time. It's very important to my mind. Really. You're aware about the police reports? Anybody aware of what's coming on? See? Because in Baruch College we have this problem a lot. And really now we decided we're taking the whole level to the academy to the school president Nefit, inshallah, to make sure they make a statement for us to condemn the act that we are peaceful, children in the campus, we come here to learn knowledge, and our goal is not to be terrorists, not to be those who break the law. Not to be those really, but to condemn the whole uh, student body because they are, for example, based on religion, that's illegal. I know also the school, is this private school or? Okay, you see? So there's contact between the school and the police department of cooperation. They cannot breach that contact, you see? So, so anyway, but my point is, why that happening to begin with? Because the report was saying that, that the police heard some students on campus, they want to do many bad behavior. Because the student has no guidance, they have no supervisor, they get influenced, they get brainwashed by somebody, most likely from the internet, you don't know who behind that. And as a result of one individual statement, may every Kuni system, every school here in New York City, and even other, even Catholic school, what they call it, I think, St. John also, to be what? College of Concern, you see. So we can't change that yourself by your own behavior and manner. By knowing that, when you keep the Quran by your heart, your goal is what? Not to take over the country, not to put the Islamic flag over the White House, as some people would blame and shout, you see. Not to make every woman wear burqa and hijab and niqab, you see. Not to make every man grow their beard. Not to make all of that, it's a reality. It has to be coming by individual choice. Not to be imposed by anybody. Even if you don't do that, you may not to go to have fire because you don't practice every aspect of the deen. We try to do that, you see. To learn your deen and to be good citizen in this country and in the rest of the world is more important to society, to humanity, than how long or how short your will is going to be. How long, how you're short, your salah is going to be your prayer. How long, how short, your adhan is going to be. How long, how short, your bands is going to be or your skirt is sometimes. It doesn't matter the reality. If all of that doesn't come with what? with moral, ethical standards that you love your humanity, you love yourself, you love your family, you love everybody around you, and you are here to give it for a message to everybody. That, as the Quran said, this is now for sure the last ayah we say, inshallah, O mankind, ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unta, wa ja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu, Inna akramakum inda Allahi at Oh mankind, 
We had created you and made you from single male and female, referring to Adam and Eve. Okay? And we made you tribes and nations in order to know each other. And after that, the most honored one among us you, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has the highest level of what? Taqwa, righteousness, and moral standard and character. So inshallah, make that our goal before the appearance. And my advice to you as other brother, that at that age you are in, you have a lot of resources, a lot of blessing. Use it all of it to focus on your non-appearance qualities. Use put too much effort on their appearance. And they neglect something more important with their character, manners, ethical, intelligent, achievement. So my advice to you, put your energy now, your effort on what? On non-appearance quality. You develop that, you have that all your life. You develop only appearance quality, you lose something more important. May Allah bless you all. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for Sister Sumayya who put up with me a lot just to get hold of me. And uh, Alhamdulillah, thank you for MSA, Brother Talha, I think. Let me see. Brother, who was Yur Arif? Yur Arif. Thank you for the invitation. Jazakumullah Khair. Inshallah, we'll now follow up with the next segment, Inshallah. Okay. Brother, I have a question. You have a question? Okay. Who, who is Arif? Audi. Yeah, I was asking what country you're going to Sorry, I was born in Damascus. Damascus is the oldest living capital in the world. Really? I'm serious. Question in the Bible. You will tell me in America, oh, I came from like, you know, 50 years old city or a village or a couple of I came from a city, go back in history and recorded in like documented record more than only 10,000 years ago. And until now, still alive. You go there, you find on it, like something goes in history, 1,000, 2,000, and for us it's very normal. We even pay attention to that. You come here, you find a house, 20 years old, has to be preserved because it's antique to see. But alhamdulillah, that one, you know, it's relevant. So Damascus, the great city. Allah may Allah bless you again and keep you with the blessing of Eid event and for the Quran inshallah. Rabbana taqabbal minna waqbalna wa'afina wa'afu anna waqfalna warhamna rabbal alameen waj'al al-Quran al-Kareem rabi'a al-Qurubina yufaqid al-Rahman. Assalamu alaykum. I'm Sadhguru Khair, brother of Sheikh Sameh for his words of wisdom. Inshallah shortly we'll be starting with the film. Meanwhile you can help yourself with food.